here's what it is. Um, if you look at the earth and you look at a person or anything giving birth, it's much the same. Mm. Like, I think people are very married to keeping the mammalian garden party alive. You know, like we have to save the resources and all this stuff. And it's true. We want to keep a beautiful, healthy planet that's sustainable for future generations and for all of us. But at the same time, all this is happening for a reason. And we all have a role to play in this. And it's not by mistake. Okay. So through every birth, there is, you know, the stretching of organs the shedding of blood, screaming. Mm. And it's like, the, the, if, you, if you didn't, if you've never seen a birth before and you turned a corner uh, and you saw it, you would lose your mind. Yeah. You'd think you have a serious medical emergency. Mm -hmm. But if you have your wits about you and you know what's going down, you're like, oh, this is how new life comes it's into existence. Yeah. This is how it's always been. And it happens on every level. So the chicken egg has to crack in order for the, for the chick to emerge. The placenta has to be torn and shed and torn asunder. And that's exactly what's happening to the earth. You know, mm. the earth is like a giant egg and we are breaking the shell and you know, the placenta is opening and new consciousness is emerging. And all of us are playing our role in that. Mm -hmm. It's like this divine ballet. Beautiful. Someone's opinion may contradict yours. Where's my friend Alan? It's all about your perspective. Who are we and what is the nature of this reality? Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are on site in the beautiful Topanga, California. We are now gonna be talking about conscious evolution. We have Umberto Braga joining us on the show. Hey Al, thanks for having me. I'm so pumped <laughs> for this conversation, Umberto. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. We're gonna rock this. For those that don't know Umberto's background, he's a writer, an artist, an entrepreneur focused on conscious evolution healing, awakening, and bringing creative solutions to uplift humanity. And you can find the links in the bio below to his work. All right, Umberto, let's start things off with one of our favorite questions to ask our guests. What are your thoughts on the direction of our world? <laughs> yeah, so I think the first thing that people go to when we think about the world is just how crazy things are and how dark it is. Um, and there is that, but I really see it as a catalyst for awakening that's what's happening it's like a pressure cooker that's making people forced to look at their own shit to wake <laughs> up like you have to there's no way yeah. and i you know while there's a lot of pessimism i'm actually really optimistic likewise yeah because never before in history have we had so many people looking into self-work going deeper into things um and at a more you know exponential pace with the internet uh, a lot more people have access to healing possibilities, resources. And so that to me signifies that, you know, all this stuff, whether it's, you know, the political stuff or industrial um, civilization that's depleting entire ecosystems, like there's a reason why this is happening. And I think from a broader perspective, when you pull away from the subjective, you know, the desire to save the trees and the bees and the whales and the snails and all that stuff, you have to look back at the greater intelligence and say, why is this happening? Well, I think the only consistent, the, the only constant through all of evolution is the evolution of consciousness, mm. like its growth. I mean, from dirt to single celled organisms mm -hmm. to, you know, fish to mammal, like it, it, the earth wants consciousness to evolve. That's the only constant. So all this craziness that's going on is meant to advance that project of being. That's really what it's all about. And so I'm really excited because I think we have a lot of great potential opening to us. There's a lot of dangers too that mm -hmm. we have to watch out yeah. for. But, you know, I think that there's a divine intelligence working through everything. So I think that there's a fair amount of providence. Yeah, it's, it's interesting <clears throat> that you call it a pressure cooker. I like that as well, that there's yeah. 
there's now so many pressures being put on us to evolve our own consciousness and there's so many pockets of consciousness uplifting that's currently happening in all different types of modalities you listed self-work as this yeah. that's such a critical one and that's if not the most critical one and there's so many ways to do self-work and then that's kind of like all these different modalities are opening up which is awesome mm -hmm. and i like how you also put it in the scale of like deep time that ever since the beginning of life on this rock that it's just been going towards complexity evolving towards complexity and evolving towards propagating more consciousness mm -hmm. for consciousness to have more meaning more creativity for more it. connection more expression all those yes. things yes yeah. yes for to be able to understand source better and yeah i want to i want to ask you about that um i want to ask you about that next i want to ask you a question along the way which is um what would you say is a main principle for us to embody to really push the envelope of our own conscious evolution? I mean, that's it's a hard question to answer because everyone's path is so different. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you say us, they, the people are so vastly different in their levels of being that it's hard to give a, a one size fits all for yeah. everyone to do. Um, I mean, if I had to choose one thing, I think it would just like learning to be. Yeah. Just be. Yeah. Can you, I mean, I, there's a person who I really loves work. Uh, his name is Philip Shepard. Yeah. We had him on the show. We love He's him. He's phenomenal. Yeah. I love Philip. Yeah. And he has a really great way of talking about embodiment and, you know, how with yourself can you be? Yeah. And how much of the world can you take in, not just with your your eyes and your ears and your thoughts, which are constantly either projecting into the future or comparing from the past, but just being with the breath yeah. and being present. And then from that point, then when you're interacting with other people, you're not taking their, you know, anything that's offensive from them, you're not taking it personally because you see it that is disproportionate to the moment. It's from their projections, from their wounding, and you find a greater expansive place of being to hold the world in. You know, it's not, you're not so against it all. You know, and I've learned that from my own past. Um, I had a really rough childhood, so this isn't just me living in Topanga in Los Angeles, some bougie whatever, like, it's taken me a long time to get here through a lot of horrible stuff. Mm. And that's been one of the biggest uh, graces for me is being able to just embody that being and just be with my experience and other people's and to hold it. Yeah. yeah that's a, that's a critical point of self work is to j learn how to just be. And that is also actually really uh, conducive to our own divine communion with source. The more that we just be, the more we can tap into things that are a little bit more ethereal than just this using language and sociability which right. is what we're usually hyper conditioned to to do in every moment of time that we have spare moment of time that we have yeah walk us through that journey though and some of the things as much as you'd like to share yeah yeah um well i mean uh, just to give you the quick i don't want to go into this like huge oprah winfrey moment like <laughs> it all started when <laughs> i was two <laughs> yeah no uh so I was, my mom was born deaf and my father was from Brazil. He was very abusive to her. My mom had taken me away when I was three and um, she had a very traumatic childhood. She passed that childhood on to me with a lot of abuse in many different ways. So I grew up with complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which I didn't know about until like three years ago, I'd say. Um, so what wound up happening is that I've just been going through this process of stripping away the layers of armor and conditioning um, and my process has kind of looked like ever since i was young i knew that there was something wrong with the world and i always had questions you know even when i was little like i would look up at the stars and it's not even just like oh what are those but it's like this feeling like there's something looking back at me mm -hmm. and there's something out there there's more what is it and i could feel like this this pull and you know I think one of the best, one of the best symbolisms from my childhood is I used to have this, uh, this hobby of breaking open rocks, 
like just digging up rocks, plain looking rocks and looking inside for the crystals. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I do with my life. I smash things open to look for the treasure inside. <laughs> that's what I've been doing ever since. Yeah. And, you know, and mostly the thing I've been smashing is myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously that's uh, been, that's opened up a lot of doors because then you get in, I got into spirituality, psychedelics, um, which blasted open a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. Um, then, you know, getting deeper into esotericism, like Gurdjieff, mm -hmm. Moravia, mm -hmm. Hermeticism, yeah. Gnosticism and all that, and going much, much deeper. And yet while still being inundated by the new age scene here in Los Angeles, which is very distorted so uh, spirituality. Distorted, yeah. And so yeah. trying to find some equilibrium and compassion through all of that and not letting the ego come in, like, mm -hmm. you guys don't know what you're talking about, yes, but yes. trying to understand like, okay, this is where they're at. Everyone awakens in their own time. time. It's yeah. part of the process and you have to honor that and meet them where they're at instead mm -hmm. of saying, you need to get up here yeah, and yeah, understand, yeah. you know? So that, um, through the process of going through all that stuff, um, I got deeper into the emotional work when I started reading about psychopaths and power. Mm, like mm -hmm. just studying about psychology and like, okay, why are the people in power doing this? Oh, they're psychopaths. Mm. Okay, the psychopathy has taken over corporations and mm -hmm. banking and it's all insane. But then in the process of reading about psychopathy, uh, I learned about things like narcissistic wounding yeah, and like childhood wounding and reading it in every page, I'm like, fuck, this is me. Mm -hmm. And just realizing that there was so much in myself that needed to be taken care of and then seeing it in everyone else. Me too, yeah. And just like, whew, there's so much that needs to be loved and so much that needs to be brought yeah. to light. Yeah. And that's, and I realized like even through the process of, you know, I've, I've been abducted by extraterrestrials along the way. Like that's mm. a whole nother thing. Damn. And realizing through studying a lot of work up in the extraterrestrial phenomenon uh, that all of it comes down to clearing out your own stuff and healing it. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there's there's the knowledge yes. aspect, but if unless you clear this out, you're always going to be a vector for attack. Yes. Okay, so there's a couple aspects to the journey. The first one is that it's it's interesting that you have the same sort of of uh, story arc that a lot of other people that we sit down with have that are really deeply aware of their conscious evolution, which is that they found their greatest treasures on the other side of their traumas. Yeah. And that they really had to go through that process of deep, serious reflection, looking in the mirror about themselves and understanding themselves, who they are, um, who their parents were, how they became who they were today. And then doing that process of, of, of healing and integrating and feeling divine and finding out what is my purpose here? What is my role? And pursuing that with great vigor. And then it's also interesting that um, the people that you were listing, that you were that you were studying, and you know, Gurdjieff, there's just so much of this that's now made more commonly available with the democratization of information technology that we can just more so access it, access the signal more easily, but there's also a lot of noise. We, you were giving this example of the, some, sometimes we look at new age spiritual things and we're like, okay, like, I guess there's different ways, you know, to Yeah, there's commune. some truth to that, I guess, yes. but, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it's, an, and you gotta, you know, like you say, you're very careful with not, you know, with not saying that this is the right way and whatnot. Uh, at the same time that you know that there are and you've seen it in yourself and you now see it in other people, but you see how people awaken, you see their processes, you see this deep psychopathy that exists in social, in certain people and how it can actually be healed and we can live with a more loving, more peaceful, healed society and mm -hmm. make it easier for children who are born into the world to access their own divine communion and actualization and bringing their gifts forward. But that requires us to do this long process of our own self work as well as building that social fabric that we all know is possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's do, um, more on the connection to source. What has been your connection with all that is? <laughs> My connection to all that is, that's a big question. Mm -hmm. I guess I've always felt like there's a force guiding me. 
and and for a long time I used to think like is this like is this ego to think that I'm special or something like that but no I feel like we all have for people who I think there's some people who come here with a mission let's put it that way right they call them you know wanderers or star seeds or whatever you want to call them and I think that for myself uh, my relationship has always been that I have a purpose and as I started getting into astrology and human design and numerology um, then things started popping up like oh it's it that's what it says in my chart and like it's there 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 and I started to piece the the puzzle together you know a little bit by little bit and um, my relationship has been one primarily of trust for the most part and that's been a big lesson because it's trust now before it used to be rage I used to be so pissed mm. off and because of all the trauma and all the injustices in the world mm. and like you know um, I always thought of myself as okay we're part of God sure yeah and love and light and yada 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 but that's what we that's what we come from that's what we'll return to right because objectivity embraces all things it holds all things mm. with love and grace and yeah. and so that's fine but I'm here in the subjective process and I'm fucking pissed off like I have all this childhood mm. rage mm -hmm. and all these things are happening everyone's asleep so for a long time I was very vitriolic uh, to people and very like you know light things on fire conversationally like if you don't see the truth I'm gonna break Damn. you I'm gonna shatter your paradigm fuck you you're getting the heavy truth right now end of story or get the fuck out that's the way I was and I saw that as like being the righteous sort of truth and I think in some circ circumstances like that energy is very helpful mm -hmm. but doing it surgically and with tact yes and with compassion that's critical that's the that's the part that I've kind of integrated into yeah. it skillfully planting the seeds right yeah and yeah. then watering them and having the other the person go home and water them themselves right yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I feel like you know what's interesting I for a long time I had this this pressure and this goes back to the trust thing with the divine like I had this pressure like oh my god we're running out of time mm. and resources mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. what's humanity gonna do and I realized you know I can't save the world and there's a part of me that would really love to you know I think we all want to on some level because we care so much you know but there's a certain amount of like okay this is all part of an unfolding process through a wisdom that's greater than ours yes. that we can ever fathom and we have to trust the process and trust ourselves as long as we're aligned with you know divine purpose and awakening and healing and all those things that align us with truth yes then the rest will unfold as it should yes yes so the more that we consciously evolve ourselves yeah. and then have that divine force that's channeling through us to be a conscious creator on in the world and we surrender to that process yeah. and we let that force drive us that that force is greater than ourselves the more it feels like we are actually in a communion and not ego driven uh, I, I want to ask a question this has been one of my favorite ones to recently ask but how do you decide during your process of conscious evolution when you have like this this option you know you're gonna write or you're gonna work on your art for four hours or you're gonna go on a hike for four hours how do you know which one is the right choice for you where do you like feel that intuition that type of stuff how do you know how you're being guided by four? um yeah i just go with what i feel i just and where do you feel it i you know what it is it's like it's a feeling of epiphany interesting you know what i mean like i i don't try to force things like if i'm gonna work um obviously i'm gonna sit down and put the time into it uh, but not because like I feel like oh god I have to do of this course, yeah because you, you want know? to unless it's a day job yeah but that's like I'm talking for, for the passion like it, it comes and emerges from me like I have a passion for writing I have a passion for creating and touching others yeah. and seeing them like ignite yes. and become enlivened and enlightened and I love that and it makes me just overwhelmed but you know I can go on a hike anytime mm -hmm. you know so if yeah if I've been letting my ass pancake on a seat all day 
and I'm like, well, I could go on a hike. If I'm still in the flow, it's like, okay, I'll get up and I'll do a little bit of yoga or qigong and mm -hmm. I'll get into my body for a little bit and walk around. But, you know, I'm going to stay here and stay in the zone. I'm going to embrace that. Okay. And then how about, does it feel like everything that's unfolding, this grand creation that's unfolding, mm -hmm. does it feel like it's a big artistic expression of God, or source? And does it feel like we're all different, like paint strokes on the canvas or instruments that are being played in the symphony? Yeah, I think that's one way to look at it. I think uh, you can look at it from the artistic perspective. You can look at it from, you know, a, a chemist perspective. Like we're all different chemical elements coalescing mm. and some of us are catalysts. Some of us are bases, mm. you know, and it's, you can look at it from different like analogies. That. Yeah. And really what it is, is here's what it is. Um, if you look at the earth and you look at a person or anything giving birth, it's much the same. Mm. Like, I think people are very married to keeping the mammalian garden party alive. You know, like, we have to save the resources and all this stuff. And it's true. We want to keep a beautiful, healthy planet that's sustainable for future generations and for all of us. But at the same time, all this is happening for a reason. And we all have a role to play in this. And it's not by mistake. Okay? Yeah. So... Through every birth, there is, you know, the stretching of organs, the shedding of blood, screaming. Mm. And it's like, the, the, if, you, if you didn't, if you've never seen a birth before and you turned a corner uh, and you saw it, you would lose your mind. Yeah. You'd think you have a serious medical emergency. Mm -hmm. But if you have your wits about you and you know what's going down, you're like, oh, this is how new life comes it's into, into existence. Yeah. This is how it's always been. And it happens on every level. So the chicken egg has to crack in order for the for the chick to emerge. The placenta has to be torn and shed and torn asunder. And that's exactly what's happening to the earth. You know, mm. the earth is like a giant egg and we are breaking the shell and, you know, the placenta is opening and new consciousness is emerging and all of us are playing our role in that. Mm -hmm. It's like this divine ballet. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I love the analogies, the chemistry one, the, the egg that's cr cracking open, the chick emerging. Now, you know, I think another good question here that we discuss quite a bit is that there seem to be forces that are at play that are, in a sense, you've, you've written about this, the matrix control system. It seems as though there is evil and evil serves its purpose. Mm -hmm. in many ways what do you how do you see good and evil and how do you see malevolent forces at play on what looks like and feels like a chessboard or a game board that is planet earth mm -hmm. and trying to maybe take control of that chick that's cracking from the egg yeah so at its core like if you really boil it down to like what is good and evil I would say that Good is truth and freedom. Mm. Evil is deception and control, trying to control others. Yeah. And it really comes down to objectivity versus subjectivity, like embracing the divine and what is, mm. or trying to control everything and trying to bend it to your will, which is essentially trying to get into a stare down contest with the universe. Like you're not going to win. win yeah. So <laughs> objectivity always wins. So get on the right side of life. Get on the side of objectivity because the subjective, the evil part is going to be a losing game no matter what. Mm -hmm. That's just the end of the story. And then how do you, how do you see what's at play on the, as like this, this board game that's on the planet? Do you, do you feel as though there are, you know, off, off world forces that are coming at play through us as channels? Oh, hundred percent. Okay. So, and then tell us about your relationship and, um, with yeah. that. So. I've seen UFOs consistently since I was a kid. And your abduction as well. So teach us about that too. Yes, please. Yeah. Right. So I was abducted when I was 28, 27. And I woke up in a dream. And I was... So basically, I don't know if you want me to walk you through the whole story. I'll give you the, little, the short rundown. But I was walking through this uh, mental asylum. And I was just touching this... Uh, 
bathroom curtain and I pushed it open and there was this black spider that came down and bit my left arm, but I felt it on my right arm. So I knew I was sleeping. I was like, oh, I don't want to be here. Let me wake up. And I you know, forced myself to wake up. And when I woke up, I was laying down on a table and there was just this ambient lighting. And I didn't know where I was. And have you ever been on the ride called the Gravitron at uh -huh. a circus where like, you're up against the yes. wall? Gravity. And I was trying to look around and see what's happening and I couldn't move my neck. So I had to do a bicep curl. <laughs> Those are crazy. I forgot yeah. what, I think there's a, um, an actual medical terminology for it when you're, you're, you're physically, like you said at the, the Circus Gravitron when you're just yeah. being pushed, like you keep commanding yourself to want to move, but you can't right. and you're in a dream state mm -hmm. and it's really, uh, it, it kind of like hurts your spirit because you're like, I have completely lost physical motor control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is terrifying. terrifying. Yeah, and yeah, I think there's there's one thing called sleep paralysis where mm. you know that so you don't you know when you're having a bad dream you don't run out of your bed and whack up against the wall. But this is something different. And I did a bicep curl and I put my hand underneath my head and I forced my head up. And when I did, there were two gray extraterrestrials that came out of the darkness. And I just remember thinking, holy shit, it's happening to me. This is real. Like, I knew it was real, but you don't know how real it is until like you have that like heaving sickness in your stomach of, oh my God, they're right there. And I remembered at that moment, uh, Carla Turner, who is this famous ufologist, who was saying that one of the greatest tools that a person has during the point of abduction is anger. Like, Interesting. use your anger, that's willpower. Cause it's really, it's about conscious willpower and focus. And anger is fantastic at that. So what I did is I just thought like, you fuckers abducted me. Like you kidnapped me and how dare, you know what I mean? And I just got so livid that I just fought to get up as hard as I could. And I started, you know, pushing myself up towards them. And then the gravity just increased so hard that it slammed me back on the table. And then another gray came right over my head about this close, like a foot away from me and big almond black eyes. And I just started falling asleep and I couldn't stay awake. But in my head, I was like, I'm still here. You yeah. can't like, you can do whatever, like you're doing whatever you can, but I'm still here. You're never going to touch me. I want to get out of here. I want to wake up now. And I woke up and it was like three something in the morning. And at the time I, I like looked outside and there's nothing around. Okay. I went back to bed and mind you at the time I was in uh, bodywork school. So I had no nails, right? or anything like that. And I was fully clothed, nothing sharp around the bed. But mm. when I woke up to get dressed, I had claw marks on my body and I had a triangular cut out of the back. Bernhard Gunther, who's my good friend, yes. I showed him this too. And he's like, holy God, like there was no way, like it was like animal claw marks and there's a puncture wound right here, dead center. So yes, there are malevolent forces out there. All that to say, there are many malevolent forces out there, but just like the way we feed on chickens and yes, yes. you know f vegetables and like we manipulate them for our life feeds on life. Life, yeah, yeah. And if you have weak points, um, if you have spiritual fragmentation, you open up your. You are a vector. vector. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there are definitely dark forces out there, but ultimately they are just opportunities to awaken. Right? Like they're just challenges in front of us. Like, okay, you're faced with an obstacle. How are you going to shift your blueprint, your beliefs, your abilities, and integrate that into your life to get around it? You know what I mean? To use it to your advantage. Because you can use those things to either like anchor you down, like, oh, this is so hard and there's so much oppression in the world. Or you can use it to your advantage and use it as fuel. Like you, the anger thing, you know, like I will not let this get me down. I'm going to be better than this. I'm going to be bigger than this. I have a greater purpose than this, that sort of thing, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, w I want, I want to become more open and have society become more open to hearing stories involving extraterrestrials. Um, and what, what can occur from abductions? What What is actually going on in this process? Is the physical body going anywhere? Is it just the spirit that's going somewhere? Uh, what What is? What are these processes like? What are What are the entities att attempting to do with that? All this, all these questions, and so I would just like to open up more dialogue around what is, uh, in many ways, it's 
it's esoteric and it's also just like it's against the normal path of thinking like we're not talking about these things on mainstream media so what about the relationship between what's unfolding with creation and what role free will plays in that versus determinism so i think that when most people think of free will they they don't understand that everything exists in relationship okay nothing exists in a vacuum mm. so therefore what is free will you know what i mean because if you exist with something else there's always that relationship so that's a constraint on your will whether it's you know gravity or you know what i mean like down to the molecular level there's always something if you look at um, even quantum physics like every molecule affects the other so i think that when it comes to free will the best we can do is bypass certain universal laws you know you look at astrology for example right and these are cosmic forces and let's use that as one example there's many of them there are many cosmic forces that are at play and whether or not we're conscious of them dictates whether or not we fall under their control or we can bypass them. Whether it's from other people, you know, like if there's a beautiful woman coming on to you and yet you have a deadline on a project and this woman is trying to seduce you, but you're aware of like, oh, you know what, this is the matrix coming at me because they don't want me to finish this project. I'm going to mm -hmm. step aside for a moment and just let that be because I, this is more important and there's no future here, even though my lower impulses want me to pursue this yeah that's one of those things like the matrix works through other people um and free will only comes when we are conscious of the way that those forces work through us interesting because we can bypass those forces and play with it it's the unseen forces that really dictate how much free will we have the less spiritually fragmented we are the more free will we have and the more spiritually fragmented we are the less free will we have correct the more we're kind of driven around like puppets yeah yeah interesting and then is the what would you say are like the most common you were giving this example of this the, the sexual proclivity mm -hmm. that's maybe one of these most common matrix control forces that come in to try and vector people off of spiritual awakening or mm -hmm. being in service to others. Yeah, so what, what are these other um, <clears throat> vectors that you think are most relatable that you feel? Um, I think that this, the search for significance for people, like people say ego, but I would say the search for personal significance. Like you look at Instagram and social media just in general nowadays and everyone wants to be seen mm -hmm. and it's all for superficial reasons instead of deep meaningful contributions yeah that would equate to because people want to feel connection but yeah. it's very hollow and so it's the pitfall of taking these inherent needs which we all have we all have you know human needs but distorting them and so there's the lust there's the connection there's the significance there's the vanity as well so there's a lot of aspects to ego that we have to look out for um, even the connection to God can be a trap itself. Like, mm. I want to, I want to be spiritual. You know what I mean? Yeah. And people try to shoot right up the top of the mountain, and they, you know, even they take a lot of psychedelics, and they think that that's going to make them more mm, conscious, yeah. but they don't have the foundation underneath. So it's like sticking a bottle rocket up your butt and then shooting up to the sky, and you hang out there for a second, but then you have to come crashing right, down right, eventually. Right. And ultimately, I think what it comes down to. Um, is just doing the fundamental work and then you will you know build the proper foundation and all those things will naturally emerge like if you love yourself then loving others will emerge if you um see the beauty in all things then you will see your own beauty yes you know it's it's that sort of mm. um, that is that's how you get past the pitfalls so there's a lot Ooh. of nuances lots of little things in there um yeah i write about all of these i try to attack them one at a time just trying to clear out the the debris from it because there's a lot of stuff even down to like having kids yeah. you know and like my role as a parent and yeah needing love from other people it's it's multifaceted yeah this idea of like i want spiritual awakening in five minutes but i took like over 10 years to learn language it's right. like yo <laughs> come on like let's be real this yeah. is going to be a forever journey to spiritual awakening absolutely and now 
do you feel like we're all when we all come into the world did we do you feel like we came in as spirit to meet the body and then we came in with a mission and that earth is like our school that we're here achieving that mission is that kind of how you view it or how do you view it i think everyone comes in with a different mission um some people like there's there's esoteric literature about how not everyone has a soul mm. some people are recently incarnated from the animal realm mm. right where people are more defined by the herd mm. and by their lower impulses you know you see people like they they cling to society and government and authoritarian structures and religion because they need to be part of this collective and that's how they identify themselves with these you know external uh, reference points there's other people who f can see through that and they have an inner magnetic center that's you know, this is who i am this is truth this is what's real not that damn this is all fleeting so not everyone is the same not everyone comes into this world with the same um construct and by the way not everyone goes to the same place afterwards either mm. so that's a whole nother conversation so yeah i think ultimately yes spirit or soul meets the flesh here to learn lessons um i also feel that some people come here when they are more advanced to fulfill a purpose mm. and fulfill a role and there's this inner knowing and the matrix especially goes after people with that because they want to shut them down because mm. they don't want them to awaken to awaken and awaken others because mm -hmm. that you know that ruins the game mm. then they lose their food source to yes. feed on people energetically so they need to keep everything down and if anyone pops up and starts to awaken they're like oh put the forces on him yeah. you know it's like neo in the matrix when the woman in red walks by yeah you know you have to they right. try to distract you yes yeah and then you gave this example of we of 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 a spirit potentially incarnating from the animal uh, realm f from a previous life and that having maybe more of a tendency to need a government or a religion or something mm -hmm. but then there's also this example of what well what happens you know post death and you we're going to walk us down that tell us about your thoughts regarding that sure so i think that people with more advanced souls go you know onward to the higher densities which is again another big topic of you know consciousness and how it evolves using a certain density model um, but i think that if you don't have a magnetic center to your soul if you haven't done self-work if you are completely or primarily identified with external constructs then when you die that's all gone and then so are you Mm. You return back to the spirit pool of prime conscious, or, you know, conscious matter of just plain spirit. Like everything has a spirit. The grass has a spirit. That cat has a spirit. You know, everything has a spirit. But it doesn't have a magnetic soul mm. that's unified. So different people, you know, they can either just go back to that spirit pool and return back to the primordial um, essence of what is. Or if they are a soul that's forming, then they can slowly congeal their identity and their inner knowing or they can go back and you know choose to reincarnate somewhere else with the mission there's a lot of different possibilities okay and then what's the ultimate teleology of the species what's the purpose of the human experiment is it that we are part of this divine creation and that we are f having to figure out how to level up consciousness meanwhile there is that evil that's purposely there to make it more difficult along the way and that mm -hmm. this is part of source having a beautiful expression of itself and us communing with it is that kind of like this ultimate is it for meaning and for creativity to get expressed more in the world yeah i think that i mean that's a beautiful way to put it first of all um i definitely think that's part of it and i think another part of it is just learning to ultimately when it comes to the greater purpose of things we're here to evolve consciousness like we said mm -hmm. but it's in a specific way we have technology like the internet that's coming through um, we're basically learning to connect with each other uh, but we can go two ways we can go one technologically which is artificial which serves a purpose but we also have the organic way which we have clairvoyance and psychic mm -hmm. ability clear cognizance uh, an inner gnosis, mm -hmm. which a lot of esoteric esoteric teachings write about, which is the, you know awakening the inner connection, and I've had this before with lucid dreaming, where I've been 
I've witnessed things that happened around the world. And I'd call my friend the next day and say, hey, I had a dream about you, and this is what happened in the dream. And they said, oh my gosh, that actually happened to me last night. Yeah. And so it's those sort of things where we don't need technology. There's an organic technology within us. Yes. And we can awaken that, not just to connect, but also to heal ourselves. Yes. And to just become more, you know, again, connected. And yeah. with ourselves, with the world, with others. And yeah, it's just remembering and learning what we can be and who we truly mm. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the biological inherent intelligence that's right here. And that when we externalize the the divine communion to uh, these appendages and technologies that then it uh, makes civilization less stable and ushers potentially in collapse dynamics versus coming from within it's easier to find that love that peace that harmony with nature i want to i want i want you to talk about this because we're we're also uh, it is getting a, the sun, our sun yeah. is setting a little bit it's dark so, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have um, Guy True is coming out in the fall That's of right. of this year, and I would love for you to teach about what is Guy True, and let's talk about it. Sure. So Guy True, first of all, it's going to be an online wellness search platform that basically takes people through a personal assessment that allows them to chart their progress in terms of their wellness, and it also custom matches them with practitioners of all types. For whatever they need and their content and it, so it serves both our, the members and the practitioners as well so i don't know if you've ever tried to get like to find a therapist it's like dating mm -hmm. it's really hard you spend so much time and money and energy mm -hmm. and it's just it becomes so daunting for a lot of people that they just say forget it mm -hmm. i'm just gonna you know pop open a beer or smoke something and they don't even go with it because it's just too much work. Mm. Well, Guide True is going to be a way for people to connect with the resources they need for free. And they're going to be able to get them on their own terms. So they're going to be audio, visual, uh, written resources. They're going to be able to connect for free with the practitioners. And I think it's a great way for people who are practitioners to be seen by the right people as well, sincere people. And they're going to be able to get passive income from their content on the platform. Yeah. And they're going to be able to get the practitioner, or the uh, the members' information too. So it cuts down on the intake process. So it's a way to expedite healing on every level for whatever your level may need. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. It's it's also um, the facilitation of conscious evolution through a platform that is itself consciously evolved and doing things with a deeper ethos um, that is not profiteering driven yeah. but that is uh, driven by um, being in service to others it's massive there's a couple other ones um, out that are really interesting wisdom we had boaz going on our show we really like his platform over 500,000 people are using it right now it's an israeli company they did uh match matching people based on uh being able to uh, learn from others wisdom so if somebody has went through something that you're currently going through that you'll get matched into talking to them about it That's and right. stuff like that there's so much potential for guide true and for all of these other ones that are popping up because mm -hmm they basically are going to be the 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 it's in a sense it's like the the tinder of of uh of spiritual uh connecting towards towards our conscious evolution path 100%. just yeah just be able to find out where 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 can i go next who can i talk to next how can I get the resources I need to do that conscious evolution process? Also, Joyous Heart's another really interesting one. He's doing I Am and We Are, which is gamifying um, uh, Know Thyself in, the, in, in, in uh, the North Star path. And so it's also about that conscious evolution process. That's beautiful. These are good partners that we could, let's explore, let's see what we can do about that. I, yeah. I love it, I love it. What about, um, and I'm excited to promote it too, the link's gonna be in the bio for that, everyone. Um, so do check that out. Now, do you feel like we're in a simulation? I think perception is a simulation. Ultimately, yeah, we are. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily false. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of truth to be found in that as well. It's just interpretation. What do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? The most beautiful thing in the world? <sighs> I, it's a, a toss-up. 
either breakthroughs, no, that's what it is. It's I, I just tied it together. It's breakthroughs and epiphanies in healing. Ooh, like it's great. When a person hits that point where it's just like, it unlocks for them. Yes. And like, oh my God. And it all falls together. Like witnessing that and being in that space where everything simultaneously crumbles and then like the possibilities open up at the same time. Yes. And this overflow of just emotion and freedom and sorrow and excitement at the same time. It's yeah. It's like a it's like a soul orgasm. It is. Yeah, it's like the it's like everything cl collapsing but celebrating at the same time. Yeah. It's beautiful. Breakthroughs and epiphanies and healing. I believe that's the first time we've had that, and I love soul orgasm. Soulgasm. Soulgasm. Yeah. Soulgasm. <laughs> I love that. You know, it's interesting because the soulgasm happens through those breakthroughs um, in epiphanies and healing. It also happens when you get like a breakthrough and epiphany in in conscious evolution f through the uh, connection of like maybe like disparate ideas that you recently picked one up and you yeah. realized holy shit yeah. that adds a whole new aspect to my worldview now I get a big puzzle piece now yeah. and like those are also just soulgasms like oh, yeah I love that <laughs> that's how it works I love that do you feel like we need to cover anything else. Do you feel good? I feel pretty good. I feel great. Thanks for having me on here. This has been I fantastic. It. I want to do this again. This is, uh, I hope people, you know, reach out and let's talk more about this. We need to. Yes. Yeah. About conscious evolution in general, reach out to Umberto. Also for Guy True as well, reach out to Umberto. Check out the links in the bio below. Thank you very much for My coming pleasure. on the show. Thank you so me? much. Yes, it's super it's fun. great. Yeah, I love it. And I love how we finally made this first in-person and the interview happen. I'm so pumped for further co-creating. Absolutely. Let's do this. Everyone, have more conversations with your friends, families, coworkers, people online on social media about conscious evolution, about the topics that we talked about today. Let's make it more common to hear people around the world talking about this and learning and growing individually and together. Also, check out the links in the bio below again to Umberto's work and also support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations, the community leaders in your area. Support them, help them grow, support simulation. Our links are in the bio below to our Patreon, PayPal, cryptocurrency links. Support us, help us grow. And also, Go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace. <laughs> it's a wrap, brother. Beautiful. That was amazing. Good job, good job. <laughs> that was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Super like multifaceted.